This tutorial will be more beneficial if you have a good understanding of few other concepts. I do have tutorials on those concepts as part of this series, but here is a quick overview of them. First and foremost, you should appreciate that one of the challenging aspect in object detection is that for a given training sample, you have multiple labels. For example, in this image, there are multiple objects. Most belong to different classes and some belong to same class. We say that the ground truth information is variable per sample. We also know that neural networks make fixed number of predictions. And this creates a little conflict with the state of ground truth variable nature in object detection. Also, when we make predictions, we make them on feature space. We pass the image through a network generally called backbone and obtain features from various depths. And then pass these features through a small neural network called detection head that is responsible for making prediction of bounding boxes and associated class labels. And finally, because neural network is supposed to make fixed number of predictions, our setup of network is such that for every cell or a pixel in the feature space, we expect X number of bounding boxes. This X is fixed to a certain number, let's say three, but it is really hyperparameter. I'm going to be using three as an example, but really it depends on your training setup. Now I have detailed videos on these concepts in this series. So if you are not clear with any one of them, it would be a good idea to check them out. This is the high level feature map which is of size 13 by 13 and we are making predictions in this space essentially three per cell remember three is just a number that i'm making it up at this point you can always set up the network to make any number of predictions you want what is important is that this number will be same for all cells in the grid and since we are in a supervised training regime it means that we also need to have a ground truth Typically, the ground truth label is available in the image space. You can see the bounding box in this image. The image is of size 416 by 416. But it also means that we need to project the ground truth bounding box from image space to the feature space. Since feature space is a scaled down version of an image, and here in this case, the scaling factor is going to be 32, we could use it on the ground truth boxes. Essentially, you would be scaling down the coordinates of the ground truth box by a factor of 32 in this case. For other features that you obtain from different depth level, the low level features or mid level features as I call them, you would be using the respective scaling factor. And so here is a scaled down ground truth box in the feature space centered on the pixel that I have highlighted using the orange dot. As mentioned before, we'll be making three bounding box predictions per cell, which means three boxes will be predicted for this cell, three for this one, three for this one as well. You got the idea, I hope. Three predictions per cell in this grid. That said, since we are doing supervised training, in order to compute the loss, we need to select the prediction for our ground tooth box. And as I showed you here, there are many predictions that will be made, three per cell. Now the first reaction may be to compare the ground truth box with all the predictions. And that would not be the smartest thing to do. First reason would be that we'd be texting the network to make so many predictions to converge to the same ground truth. And second, here we have, we may have many objects. This is another ground truth label or box uh, in the feature space. Would you make all the predictions converge to this bounding box as well? This would make the training only harder and more likely it would not even converge. Let's come back to our ground truth box. The one which is blinking, the original one, the first one. And appreciate that the cell on which it is centered will also make three predictions. And this is our idea number one. That is, first and foremost, for this ground truth box, we do not need to consider the predictions that are not centered on this cell. And by just doing that, we have significantly reduced the space of predictions to, cons to, to be just three. So this is a good optimization, good, good, good idea. 
But then out of these three predictions, we should still select one. Let me write the problem statement properly. We can say that for a given cell, we need to choose one of the prediction box out of three to be associated with the ground truth that is centered on that cell. Choosing here implies we need a criteria. But the challenging aspect is that e to even apply any criteria, we need something stable. The predictions that our network will make will be, for the lack of better word, garbage for quite many iterations. And we need the prediction box from the get-go, that is even before the training starts, as it will be used to compute the loss. And this is where our second idea kicks in. What if, if we start with some decent prediction boxes? Decent here means that we, the human being, you, me, come up with the size of prediction boxes based on our prior knowledge as the starting point. And then these boxes are the ones that will be refined by our neural network. But at least we start with something quite good. I have zoomed on this cell with the ground truth box in question. And here are the three prediction boxes with various sizes and aspect ratios that I have created. Again, note that at this moment, they are not predicted by the neural network. I came up with the scale and aspect ratio for them. And now that we have something stable, which we also call prior, the word prior in statistics is generally used for the previous knowledge that you have or the domain knowledge that you have that you inject in your model to help it out. And therefore, we also call these boxes that I have created prior boxes. And now that we have these prior boxes or something stable, we can apply some criteria so that one of them can be associated with the ground truth label. And that criteria is called intersection over union. I have a tutorial on that in this series, but long story short, the IOU will tell you which of the two boxes are similar to each other and therefore we can use it to compare our ground truth with each of these priors and the one of them which has which will give the highest IOU will be the one that we will associate with our ground truth box. That is during the training we will refine the selected box or the prior box and use it to compute the loss for the ground truth it is associated with. The one that you see now in orange color. Again, remember that we will be placing the same three prior boxes on all the cells, whether those cells contain any ground truth or not. In this example, all the boxes that are not associated with the ground truth will be associated with what is called a background class. These prior boxes are also called anchor boxes since we anchor them to the object. Anchor you can think of like association. You should also consider background to be an object as well in order for this whole thing to make sense. Now anchor box is a more widely used term than the prior box. Now in all of the stuff that I have described so far or explained I have not explained how did I determine the size of these anchor boxes. I said that I came up with some scale and the aspect ratio for them. There are few techniques to do that, uh, that and those will be the topic for the next tutorial. And with this, I end this tutorial for now. Hope it was clear what anchor or prior boxes are. Let me know if you have some questions in the comments and I thank you for the time you've spent here. Good luck with your learning. See you in another tutorial. Goodbye.